How's everybody? Well, you know, we got started on Florida State today, so um, I don't think we should have to try to motivate our guys. I think everybody has a tremendous amount of respect for uh, Florida State, their program, the consistency and performance that they've created uh, in recent years uh, as being one of the top college football programs in the country. Uh, they certainly have an outstanding team coming back. So um, I think that it's real important that everybody sort of accepts the challenge of creating the identity that we want to create. And in doing that, I think you want to conquer challenges. Uh, but, but what is, when you can conquer something, you know you can overcome the adversity before you ever get there because you prepared the right way. Um, you have the... The, the ability and the mental toughness to be able to sustain in critical situations and when things don't go your way you can bounce back and play the next play. Um, I think it's going to be real important for our team to be able to stay focused to paying great attention to detail and I think discipline to do it down in and down out will have a tremendous impact you know on this game but I think that any first game you know usually comes down to how many mistakes do you make? Do you block the right guy? Do you play the right gap on defense? Do you cover people? Do you make mental errors? Uh, do you take care of the football? Those, those things are going to be very, very important. So, um, so you know, that's kind of where we're at and what we're doing. Um, and we're trying to get our team ready the best we can. And today was our first day uh, working with um, against Florida State. We don't have any new injuries to report. Uh, the only guy that I would say is still not practicing uh, is Josh Jacobs. Um, and he's making progress in his rehab. But, you know, these hamstring injuries are very sensitive. Um, and if you push a guy too hard, you can set him back. So we're going we're gonna to be cautious in how we progress him moving forward. I wonder what you see from Jedrick Wills since he got on campus and where has he developed? Yeah, Jed Jedrick has really done a, a good job for us. He's um, very athletic. He's physical. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good player. I think he's in competition with Matt at right tackle. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how he progresses this week. And if he does get an opportunity in the game, I'm sure we'll watch closely to see how he responds when he gets in a competitive situation being a freshman. So, but we're really pleased with his progress and uh, very encouraged by uh, what his development could bring our team. Uh, talking about the running backs and the rotation you guys have, do you, there's still like a five-guy uh, rotation you guys could possibly use, and uh, how do you handle so many guys with so much talent um, and getting them all? Well, we don't have five guys if Josh Jacobs is not there. So, you know, five minus one equals four. So we have four guys, and I think, you know, there's some of the guys that are more ready to play than others. We have two guys that have a lot of experience, and we have two freshmen that have a lot of ability. So how we choose to use those guys will certainly be determined by how they progress, uh, how they develop confidence. Uh, are they going to be able to do what I said before, have the discipline to focus on doing their job, pay attention to detail, um, not make mental errors, go in there and be able to execute so that for their benefit, so they can play well, uh, as well as the team's benefit. And I think that probably at least one of those two players that are freshmen will have an opportunity to do that in a game. Go over here on the left, Will. <clears throat> Coach, your, uh, your assistant staff gets paid about as much as their counterparts on an NFL team. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, NFL teams tend to generate between one and three times as much revenue as, as your team. Uh, I, what would you say to the folks who, who criticize that and say that college coaches are benefiting from a system that uh, – the salaries are inflated because you don't have to pay the players. Well, I don't. I don't think it has any. The reason that we pay the coaches that we have, and we have this, this the size staff that we have, is to benefit the players. Uh, you know, we want to get the best possible people around our players to help them develop personally, academically, and athletically. Um, and look, the people that we pay, it's the market. It's what the market bears. They've had opportunities to go other places and make more. 
Um, so if we want to keep them here to benefit our players, uh, then we, we have to pay them. I didn't decide what the market is, uh, but that is what the market is. And uh, we want to put the best possible people and as many people as we can that can have a role here, that can have an impact on helping our players be more successful in life because they were involved in this program. It's not just about how they develop as football players, it's how they develop as people. It's how they graduate from school and develop academically so they, they can uh, develop a career off the field. And it, it's, it's also do they have the kind of character and attitude, leadership and example that's going to help them be the kind of people uh, that can have success in their life. So, um, and I really, it doesn't bother me. I, I don't even notice that we get criticized and could care less. And we, we do as much for our players here as um, the, the rules allow, and we would continue to do that uh, so that, um, look, do I acknowledge the fact that it's an issue? I, but college football is college football. All right, so if we want to make it professional football and play the, pay the players, then that, that's, that's somebody else's decision. It's certainly not something that I should decide. Go to the back of Cecil. Uh, Coach, is there anything unique? You're, you're putting Florida State scout teams in, and, and is there anything unique in preparing for them at all? Well, I, I think the thing that Florida State does really well is they, they have very good players. They do a great job of developing their players. Um, they have a system that they do an outstanding job of executing. Um, look, it, it's a little bit more traditional, and I think that's a good thing uh, because they beat you with execution. and. That's why I say that discipline and focus to attention to detail are going to be very important in this game because that's the kind of team we're playing. They're very physical. They play with a lot of toughness. But they also do a great job of executing uh, the plan that they have. And Jimbo is you know, very creative in what he does. Um, but they're a little more traditional. When I say that, I'm talking about they're not really a spread team. You know, they have RPOs, but they don't live and die with them. So um, it's, it, it's really difficult to get the scout team to be able to execute at that level for us. It's always a challenge on defense. And, and a quick follow-up. Um, in recruiting running backs last year, you obviously recruited Cam Akers as well as Najee. How did, the, how did your recruiting of running backs go last year? How did that wind up with, with Cam at FSU and Najee here? Well, both are really, really good players, and uh, we would have been excited. To, uh, we're excited about the guy we got, and we would have been very excited if we would have got Cam Akers because we think he's a fabulous player, and I'm sure he'll have a great career there. And um, he was a good person, very productive in high school. I don't really compare players. They're both very good players, and uh, we'd have loved to have both or either one in the program. Just how has Hootie Jones uh, developed going into his senior year, and what kind of role can he have on the team this year? Hootie's had a really good camp, done a, an outstanding job of, uh, I think he's got more confidence. He's playing with more confidence. He's got a good understanding of what the expectation is to do his job very well and on a consistent basis. Um, so I've been very encouraged to, about the way he's played in fall camp, and hopefully he'll be able to carry it to the field for us. Back over here with Reiner. How would you assess the kicking situation at this point, and could you conceivably use as, uh, two kickers uh, maybe as soon as week one? Yeah, I think I got asked that question on Saturday, um, and yes, we could conceivably do that. Um, and you know, I think all players at that position are improving. Um, we really haven't decided which direction you know that will go at this point. Um, J.K. is in the mix to do long field goals and to kick off. And there's competition with the other guys to see who the most consistent guy is to do the regular field goal kicking. Alex. Along those lines, with, with kickers, you know, you've talked about how there's a mental approach that they have to have to kind of prepare themselves. What kind of preparations can they make at practice to uh, help 
improve if they have issues or something like that, or technical things that they can do in practice? Well, I, I think I can relate to kicking sort of like my golf swing. You know, how can you shoot 13 shots higher one day than the day before? Uh, and it happens quite often with me. So um, obviously that's technically something very technical about how I swing the club and how I hit the ball. Well, I think the kickers are very similar. You know, they, they have benchmarks for how they need to do things, and it's, it's, it's challenging to be able to duplicate that over and over and over again and not even get bored with it at times. Uh, I think you see it sometimes, again, in golfers. You know, you see guys winning all these major championships, and all of a sudden they get a new swing coach and change their swing. Um, why would they do that? Because they're driven to get better. And, and I think that's what happens with a lot of guys that are kickers and punters. They're always driven to get better. Um, you know, I say sometimes to, you know, JK, I mean, 55 yards, that's good enough. You don't have to kick any further than that. All right, so just how about I'd be real happy with just that. Uh, so, but he's, he's driven to try to do better. And then sometimes when you, when you do that, just like you try to drive it, if you drive it 250, you want to drive it 270. Then when you start trying to drive it 270, you can't hit it 230. I mean, that's it's a metaphor of life. I mean, it, that's, that's how it is in life. You know, I mean, I always try to get better, and sometimes you don't make the right choices and decisions to do it. You can't stay focused on the right stuff. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out too well. So that's always a challenge. Wrap up here in the back of Jim. Hey, Coach, uh, in the time that you spent working with Jimbo Fisher, what did you see from him, the type of success he's had? Well, Jimbo, I thought, has always been one of the best coaches I've ever been around. Uh, he did a fabulous job for us as offensive coordinator. He's very innovative. He's smart. He's a hard worker. He's well-liked by the players. He's a good teacher. Um, and he's a good game day play caller. So all those things add up to very few faults um, in terms of being an offensive coach. And I, I've always kind of thought that Jimbo would be a fantastic head coach, which he has certainly proven to be. Uh, and, you know, they have as good a team as anybody in the country, I'm sure, right now because of it. Thank you, Coach. All right, thank you, guys.